Welcome back to Network Africa. Well, we're in South Africa before the break. Police in the country, though, continue raids in Johannesburg with around 30 people arrested. The raids are part of a massive operation to confiscate counterfeit goods. Some traders say they're unhappy about the manner they've been treated by the police following a raid to confiscate counterfeit goods that resulted in a violent clash between police and business owners late last week. The Minister of Small Business and Development, Kumbudso Nashavini, visited the business district to engage with the traders and the police as to what may have caused a clash and how to prevent a recurrence. Our correspondent, Itumaleng Mafisa, reports. The streets of downtown Johannesburg remain tense after a violent police raid. Informal traders working in this part of the city have expressed outrage at the manner in which they were treated. Well, uh, in the apartheid times, we were brutalized by, by, by the apartheid police by taking our things. But what was better in those days is that in their brutality, they arrest you so that you must have to go to court. In the new democracy, the only thing that is happening now in this country is that the, the, the metropolis is taking your stuff and you are not arrested. A Nigerian national who has been trading in Johannesburg for a number of years says foreign nationals have a role to play in the South African economy. When the foreigners came, there's no job. They decided to take over street trading businesses. It's not that to, to say that there are no South Africans doing that, but we have more foreigners doing those businesses because the reason being why no jobs for them and they need to survive. So they, they created that as a platform to survive. So they started with trading on the street and everything. And like here, they don't get grant. They have no support system. The Minister of Small Business and Development, Kubuto Taveni, has disputed allegations that the raids were fueled by xenophobic motives. There was not a foreign mission there. The police were going to deal with a situation where counterfeit goods are said to be sold at particular instances and they were going to raid and confiscate those goods as is a requirement of the law. It is irrespective of whether it was sold by a person from Somalia or a person from Zimbabwe or a person from Soweto or a person from uh, Sibasa where I come from. It, the issue is that they are selling counterfeit goods. So let's remove the foreign na the nationality of persons. is the illegality of the act that it took place and also the illegality of the stoning of the police. Channels Television asks what happens to the confiscated goods? The novel procedure is that when these goods are confiscated, we, they are exhibits and they are stored in police custody. A detailed record of the exhibits are kept at the police station. And once the investigation is completed, uh, at that stage we will determine whether it needs to be handed back to the owners or it needs to be destroyed. The hustle and bustle continues in the streets of Johannesburg as government engages in more talks with informal traders. From Johannesburg CBD, Itumileng Mafisa, Channels Television News. Burundi's main city has been hit by a cholera outbreak, forcing authorities to shut unhygienic bars and restaurants in Bujumbura. So far, 126 people have been infected by the acute diarrheal infection, which is caused by ingestion of food or water contaminated with bacterium vibro cholera. In severe cases, the disease can kill within hours if left untreated. Authorities are closing establishments operating in markets and near the roads that were found to have poor hygiene standards. Lake and river water that some city residents use have also been banned. A female lawmakers have walked out of Kenya's parliament in solidarity with a colleague who was ordered to leave because she came into the chamber with her baby. Zuleika Hassan says she brought her five-month-old baby with her to work because of a domestic emergency and that parliament does not have a crash. According to house rules, strangers are not allowed into the chamber, including children. Some of her male colleagues have described her actions as shameful. Hassan, however, has asked Parliament to create a more family-friendly atmosphere if it wants more women to become MPs. Meanwhile, the Kenyan government has issued birth certificates to 600 children from the Shona community as part of a move towards sending, ending statelessness for about 3,500 people. 
A Shona community arrived in Kenya from Zimbabwe as Christian missionaries in the 1960s. They carried Rhodesian passports and were registered as British subjects. Some of them later missed an opportunity to register as Kenyans, rendering them stateless. More than 600 children from the stateless Shona community in Kenya were recently issued with birth certificates for the first time at a ceremony held in Nairobi. The Shona community arrived in Kenya from Zimbabwe as Christian missionaries in the 1960s. After Kenya's independence in 1963, they held a two-year window to register as Kenyans, which many missed, rendering them stateless. Emma, a third-generation Shona, was born in Kenya in 1986. Now, like Things will change. With this piece of paper, it will be easier for the community members to move to different places and they can make a life for themselves. Just walking around with that paper will help. Without proof of nationality, the Shona and other stateless communities were unable to access basic rights like education or health insurance. They could not travel, own property, be formally employed or access financial services, among other rights enjoyed by Kenyan citizens. The move by the government to issue birth certificates has been hailed as an important step towards ending statelessness for the community of around 3,500, half of whom are aged under 18. I had very high hopes, but I never imagined this day would come, and that we will be as happy as we are today. This day, has brought so much happiness and it shows that there is progress and a big step has been made here. The UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR, is working with the government and civil society in Kenya to resolve statelessness. In 2006, around 4,000 Makonde were recognized as the 43rd tribe of Kenya, a major breakthrough. An estimated 18,500 stateless people currently live in Kenya. This includes different groups of stateless people of Pemba and Shona origin, as well as groups of individuals of Burundian, Congolese, Indian and Rwandan descent. I imagine a whole new life for these people. Thanks again for watching Network Africa. I am Amarachi Ubani.